Welcome to Ease on Third Baptist Church. Stay tuned for today's previously recorded message. May this recording be a blessing to your life. God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Isaiah and Fair Baptist Church here in Wilmington, Delaware, the church where everybody is somebody. We want to take this opportunity to thank so many of you who continue to watch our telecast every week. It's a joy and a pleasure to have you as a part of our church family. I often joke and I say we have two congregations. We have those who show up on Sunday morning and we have those who show up on Channel 28 on Sunday morning. We call you the bedside Baptist. Baptist for Ezai and Fair. And believe it or not, there are many of you who have certainly um, really adopted us as your church, and we appreciate that so very, very much. We appreciate you. The reason why we continue to provide such quality programming is because we are concerned about you. Some of you may not be able to come out of your homes, and especially during this time of COVID when we are required to stay with our distancing and things of that nature. So we wanted to make sure that you are fed the word of God as well. And we appreciate you so very much. So I thank you so very much. And listen, I am your pastor. I love you dearly. And we want you to continue to grow in your faith as we uh, move closer to where God has taken us all to be. It's now time for us to spend some time hearing what the choir, or should I say the praise team, want to share with us today. So I pray that you will bless the Lord with our praise team as they now will bless us with a selection. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto my king, yeah. I will sing praises unto my king, yeah. He is creator of everything. He is creator of everything. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. Honor and reverence forevermore. Honor and reverence forevermore. We live God, to our God, to our God, to the we ascribe, we ascribe, we ascribe glory, honor and wisdom and strength, to our God, to our God, yeah, 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 yeah. praise I will offer to glorify thee, praise I will offer to glorify thee. And I'll declare that thy name is holy. Be thou exalted above the heavens. And Lord, thy glory above all the earth. We Adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody, like nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare, we declare nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare 
Nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. We like you. Nobody like you. Say we worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. We, worship. we worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We Nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore, you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. Nobody, like Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore, you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. Nobody, 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 nobody. nobody. We worship. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for our praise team and we pray that God will continue to bless the praise team as they surrender unto us the songs of Zion. Saints, every year our church honor those seniors who are graduating and going on to do further and greater things uh, in the world. And here at East Zion Fair, I truly believe that, you know, education is very important, that we must educate our minds just like we educate our spirits. And I don't believe that our young people should be those who are so churchy that they have no education. They need to make sure and we need to make sure that we are putting our children on a path to what I consider to be excellence. It is expected of every child who goes to Ezion Fair Baptist Church that they will leave high school and then go on to college. And today I'm so honored to have four of our babies who will be leaving us to go on to college and we want to honor them at this time. So please, let's look at what the Lord has blessed us with. God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Curry, pastor of Ezai and Fair Baptist Church. What a joy, what a privilege it is for us once again to celebrate and thank God for what he has done. We have four of our children, four, one, two, three, four, four of our children who will have graduated from high school. We know that this has been a very, very trying year for our seniors because they have not been given the opportunity to have the proper graduation, the proper commencement that all of us have so enjoyed. I looked forward the times when I graduated just to hear that um, song, that graduation song. I was looking forward and they did not get that opportunity. So I thought as their pastor, we should do something special just for them. So we're going to take this moment to honor the four young people who have done well, who have graduated, who have made it through the struggles of life and they graduated from high school to God be the glory. They had to suffer through 12 years 
years of, of rigor study. They had to sacrifice. They had to go through uh, sacrificing their friends and time out in order for them to, to graduate. And I say to all four of them, thank you and congratulations. You have achieved much. Don't let your head be hung low because you have not had the opportunity to have a graduation. But please lift up your head and be lifted up because you have made it. There were many who tried and they did not succeed, but you did. We give God glory for that and we honor God because God has had his hand on each one of your lives. First, I want to honor our own sister, Sister Maya Cunningham. Sister Cunningham has been a member of our church for the past seven years and she, her mother is a member here serving as a trustee and Maya is graduating from Mount Pleasant High School. She's graduating with honors and we thank God for her. We thank God for how God has blessed her to be able to uh, maintain even through the crises that she has experienced in her life. We appreciate the fact that she's going to Delaware State University and God is going to bless her tremendously there. She is a great uh, success to the kingdom of God. She served as a junior trustee for our trustee board and she's been active in our church the whole time that she's been with us. So we thank God for her and we the members of Ezion Fair says to Sister um, um, Cunningham, congratulations, and we wish you well, and we want to announce we will be giving you a scholarship to help you at Delaware State University. Then we move from that, that from her to Devin. Devin Tillery is one of our young sons of this church. He and his wife, and he and his mother, and his father, shall I say, and his brother are all members of the Easy and Fair Church family. The father and mother serves as a deacon and and a trustee here at Ezion Fair. And we're very grateful for Devin. Devin has served in the Holy Soldiers. Devin has served on the Greeters Ministry. And he's also served our church in the band. And we thank God for every aspect that he's worked in since he's been with us. Devin is graduating from William Penn High School. What a great honor student he has been. He has been strong in his academics. He understands the rigor of study. He's now going on to Delaware State University. University to do some great things for God and I want to announce to Devin that you too will receive a scholarship from Ezion and Fair to help support you as you endeavor to continue to do what God has called you to do. Next I turn my attention to Sister Destiny Samuels. What a great wonderful, wonderful young lady. She has done so much in her short time of living. 12 years of sacrifice. Both her mother and her father are members of our congregation destiny she served with our women's ministry and we thank God for the things that she's done to support us and we appreciate her 12 years destiny you've done it you've made it you are more than a conqueror I pray that what you that God will continue to bless you and strengthen you in all that you do I want to announce to you today that you too will be receiving a scholarship from your church family as you go on to Towson University to do some great things you've come from great soil and I know no, you will only produce that which is excellent. You have been a great honor student at the high school, and I know God is going to bless you strongly as you move on to the university. Stay strong and know that God is all of your help. Then we move on to Brother Jeriel Calazzo. He's been with us for 13 years. This young man came to us with his grandmother and his two brothers. His grandmother raised him, and this young man understands what Christian lives Living is all about. We appreciate him. We thank God for him. He's graduating from Thomas McCain High School and he's graduating with honors and we thank God for that. This young man had served Ezion and Fair in several capacities. He served as our, a part of our Holy Soldiers from its beginning. He served on the outreach ministry. He served in the men's ministry and he also served in our sound room. Jeriel, congratulations. We thank God for you. We appreciate the fact that you 
you allowed God to use you. And now that you're going to Clark Summit uh, University, I'm looking forward to seeing how God is going to unfold all of his, his desires for your life as you're going to pursue higher education. As I often say, saints, here at Easy and Fair, we believe that every child must at least graduate from high school. But we are asking all of our young people to study hard, study long, so that you can go to some college or university that you may prepare yourself for the life uh, for the world to come and, and that you may make a con contribution to this world so i thank god for all of our graduates again as your pastor i want to say congratulations as your pastor i want to say thank you thank you for your sacrifice thank you for your hard work thank you for all that you've done in order to show that you can make it if you try remember these words the race is not given to the swift nor is it given to the strong but it's given to the one who will endure to the end you have endured thus far continue to endure trials will come tribulations will occur but listen to me carefully you are more than a conqueror through christ who loves you i want all easy and fair to join me by congratulating our four seniors and making sure we get in touch with them to let them know that we appreciate them we love them and we honor them. To God be the glory. Until the next time we get together, God bless you. Saints of God, I just want to make sure you know that the Lord is moving and he's doing some mighty things in the kingdom of God. I talk with the saints this week during our time of meditation and I share with them that God is calling all of us to a level of obedience that we are not accustomed to. God is not concerned about our comfort. He's more concerned about our, our character. And what the Lord is asking all of us, and I want you to join us, is to start being obedient to his voice. I know there's so much going on as it relates to COVID-19. Our president of the United States, he seems not to want to follow the science and there's so much happening but listen to me very carefully if you trust the gospel that I preach I want you to make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to do as it relates to the science who have told us that we must distance ourselves I know you want to go to the beach I know you want to be outside you want to have your barbecues you want the grandchildren coming over to the house you cannot do that in this season I don't want to see a big flare-up in Delaware where we gotta close everything down again and so many people are losing their lives just trying to get the oxygen that they need and some don't survive it. I need for you to listen to what the scientists are telling us. We must social distance. We must wash our hands. You must wash your hands. I must wash mine. Do it constantly. Whenever you're touching surfaces that you are not familiar with or if you're at a store, have that hand sanitizer ready once you get back in your car to make sure that you are doing what you need to do. But also beyond that, I want you to make sure that you are wearing a mask. I don't have a mask on here because I'm, I'm currently, you know, doing this by myself here in the in the studio but I want to make sure you personally are wearing a mask if you see me in the street you see I have my mask I have so many different ones I have ones with my daughter I have ones with my wife I have some with the church I just I just have decided to make a wardrobe of masks because we must protect you and you must protect me we are our brother's keeper so it's not only about you it's about the people who are around you as well so I say that to you because I want you to take care of yourself especially to my seniors my seniors I need you to really pay attention younger people sometimes carry the virus and they don't even know they have it I know you want to be around your grandchildren I know you want to spend time with them and you want them coming over in and out of the house but you must be safe be careful do not just live loosely because it may not be in your dwelling you never know when uh, the coronavirus is going to try to hit in our area or hit at your home Take care of yourself, wash your hands, safe and, and do some social distancing and make sure that you're wearing a mask so that you will be protected and I believe God will be glorified. We just have a few announcements we want to share with you today. 
And I just want you to remind you that we have Bible study every two, every Thursday night at 730. The Lord has been blessing us tremendously. If by some chance you do not have the Zoom information, call the church. They will be glad and delighted to give you the information to get on to our Zoom Bible study. But we also have prayer every Sunday and every Wednesday. Man, what the Lord be doing in our time of meditation and prayer every Sunday and every uh, Wednesday at five o'clock in the morning. Listen, before the devil get up, we ought to be up praying and seeking the face of God. And that's what we're doing. So I hope and trust that you will join us. If you don't have the access uh, code number or the number for that, please call the church and we will definitely make sure that you have it. I want to say, as I often say, thank you for all of you who continue to bless Ezai and Fair with your tithing and your offering. Listen, God is doing some great stuff. This is not a season for us to be begging. This is a season for us to be obedient to the word of God. The word of God said, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me in tithing and offering. And I said to Ezai and Fair just a couple of weeks ago, that is not our issue. God is not speaking to us because we certainly pay our tithing and giving our offerings. And listen, God is doing some great things. We're still being a blessing to this community. We're still being a blessing to the household of faith. And this because of the faithful giving of the saints here at Ezai and Fair and those of you out in TV land. Thank you for what you do for Ezai and Fair and for this branch of Zion. Thank you. And I promise you, we're going to always do what we're supposed to do to show the integrity of the monies that comes into the house. Thank you so very much. It's now time for the word of God and saints of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. And listen, we're in this new series for the summer and I pray that you will be able to, to hear the word of God because today we're going to talk about prayer. Prayer do change things. And I hope and trust that you will be able to follow us. But also, don't forget before we get into the word of God that we have our 9 a.m. and our 1130 a.m. time of, of outside drive-in services. Come join us. Boy, people when they get here, they say, I did not know it would be that much fun. We make everything we do for God fun. It's not that you have to be so serious and, and, and so stuck up in yourselves, but we make sure that we release and let God have his way. And the Lord has been blessing us in our drive ups and our drive ins, rather. And I pray you will join us. Let's hear what the word of the Lord has to say for today. Nobody like you, Lord. We declare, I declare, there's nobody like the Lord. He's a great God, isn't he? He's a great God, isn't he? Hallelujah. He is a great God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now, God. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercies. We thank you, God, for your grace and for your peace. Now, God, we pray you would speak a word to your people. Help us, God, to say what you would have us to say that somebody might be healed, delivered, and set free. We thank you now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today we continue in our series entitled, Prayer Changes Things. Prayer Changes Things. Anybody know anything about prayer changing things? Hallelujah. The first week we spoke on Move My Mountain and we encourage you to stop praying and asking God to give you strength to climb your mountain, but to declare to that mountain, get out of my way and watch God move it out of your way. And then the next week, which was last week, we came back and we preached on when the answer is not what you anticipated. And we told you God has a bigger plan, a broader perspective and a bigger purpose for your life. Don't always get discouraged when things are not the way you thought it should have turned out. God has something bigger, better for you. Come on, touch yourself, say for me. Today, meet us today in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 through 21 and we're reading from the New Living Translation as we continue in this series. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to my father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that 
from his glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong and may you have the power to understand all I mean, as all God's people should how wide how long how high and how deep his love is may you experience the love of Christ through um, though it is uh, too great to understand fully then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever Amen. I like the top part of 16. It says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. And then later in 19, it says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Today, I would like to tag this message, Learn to Respect the Power of Prayer. Come on, look at somebody and say, Learn to Respect the Power of Prayer. Come on, look at somebody else because you're not you, you're looking for something deep and it ain't deep, it's real. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, learn to respect the power of prayer. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. God gives extraordinary power, my brothers and sisters, for the extraordinary challenges of an expanding witness to Jesus Christ. In other words, God has made available extraordinary power to every person of faith, which means we've got power to accomplish far more than our natural mind can fathom. It's the power that energizes our witness to Jesus Christ with conviction, courage, and consequences so that the name of God is highly exalted and greatly glorified. But here's the catch. Power given and power used are two different things. Come on, look at somebody and say, power given and power used are two different things. And in our text for today, the Apostle Paul is praying for the saints at Ephesus. And his focus is on the sufficiency of God and the resources available to every believer through Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 1 and 3, we're reminded that we have all things that pertains to life and godliness through the true knowledge of of Jesus Christ. In other words, through Christ, we possess everything necessary to fulfill all aspects of our lives. In fact, through Christ, we've been forgiven and accepted into the beloved. Through Christ, we've become sons and daughters of God. Through Christ, we are forgiven and forever his possessions and sealed with his spirit. Through Christ, we are protected by divine love, sustained by divine care, and energized by divine power. Through Christ, we are already 
tell somebody already we are already the redeemed and made to be alive in the family of God through Christ we are already a kingdom of priests and kings through Christ we have already been taught led ruled loved and built up with all of the spiritual blessings from God through Christ we are already the possessor the possessors rather of the unsearchable riches of God can I tell you what I'm trying to say through Christ we have everything that we need for those people who like to go out and find substitutes I came to tell somebody in here today you don't need a substitute everything that you need it is in Jesus Christ if you need happiness it's in Jesus Christ if you need companionship it's in Jesus Jesus Christ we look to the world to satisfy a inner craving but I want you to know that the world cannot satisfy the things that are craving on the inside you can try sex you can try money you can try prestige but at the end of the day if you don't have Christ in the root of your life you will still be empty come on look at somebody and say come on get filled uh -huh, uh -huh. which is to say my brothers and sisters through Christ through Christ through Christ we are already rich beyond our imagination through Christ we already have everything that we need through Christ whatever you're seeking you have already found but first it has to be through Christ Ephesians 3 16 said we have unlimited resources available to us Romans 8 37 said we are more than conquerors can you understand where I'm trying to go Isaiah 40 54 and 17 said no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper when you got Christ in your life all of these things become a reality Romans 8 and 39 said nothing can separate us from the love of Christ people want you to believe when you make a mistake God leaves you and abandons you but no that's just your family that's not God God sticks with you through your mess with the understanding what you're in you gonna come out of can I get a witness in here but 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 please keep in mind power given and power used are two different things come on look at somebody and say power given and power used are two different things in chapter one Paul prayed of this book of Ephesians that we would understand our resources available yet in chapter three he prayed that we would apply it them to our lives in other words after the enlightenment comes the enablement because nothing without a because knowing without applying is dysfunctional and as a people of faith we must not only be aware of what's ours in Christ but we must also act on it can I get a witness we must act on what we know we have in Jesus Christ because power given and power used are two different things you can give a person something but if they don't use what you give them they still are useless can I get a witness in here somebody this is why Paul would later write to the saints in Philippi I can do not I can know but he said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and while we must know we must also do that's why the Bible says faith without works is dead because here's the truth we eternally believe what we actually behave in other words if what we believe in our hearts is what we act out in our daily practices if we truly believe that God can do anything but fail then when troubles come we don't stress out but we look for God to come and show out brother Chairman, can I bring it a different way when you really believe that God can fix your situation when you really believe that God can turn your 
situation in your favor you don't get stressed out what you start saying in your spirit it's only a matter of time before God is going to come through and see about me do I have anybody in here today who have had some moments in your life when you didn't know what was going to come out but you decided I'm not going to stress on it I'm going to trust God through it uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All things work together for our good. You got to keep those scriptures in your spirit. All things, not some things. You can't pick and choose what's working for your good. Everything that hits your life is working for your good. Brother Pastor, I can't buy that piece of potato chip. Let me tell you something. Whether it's good or bad to you, it's good for you. Can I get a witness up in here? Is devastation yes there is no education like devastation there's some stuff you went through that you done forgot about because it didn't devastate your life but there's some things that devastated you that you still thinking about sometimes God gotta take you through a devastation so you'll learn how to trust the God that you serve <sighs> and that's the heart of Paul's prayer for the faith community. He doesn't just want us to know, but he wants us to act on the truth of what we know. Why? As he says in the text, so we might experience the power of God within us to do things that exceeds our imagination. In essence, Paul wants us to live uh, uh, our lives that exude the power of God as we do the works of God so it can result in the glory of God so Paul urged them in verse 13 of which we did not read in our text to pray so that they won't lose heart because even people of faith tremble shake and become anxious when they can't resolve their problems or control their environment. So knowing that, Paul wrote to them and said, I'm praying for you because I don't want you to be the kind of people who lose heart when trouble come. In other words, Paul wanted them to be preeminently powerful people and that God's goal for all of our lives is that we never live as weak and feeble people. Don't let what you're going through cause the devil to think he has power over your life. Can I preach to somebody in here today when the stuff hit you instead of you succumbing to what the devil thought would happen to you learn how to stand in the authority of your faith your faith says if God brought me to it God is going to bring me through it your faith says God has never left me before and God is not going to leave me now your faith says I'm too blessed to be stressed your faith says look at where God has brought me from if he did it before he'll do it again your faith says God will supply every one of my needs according to his riches in glory your faith will say I've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord yeah yeah you gotta resurrect your faith and you got to say, I serve a good God. He's an awesome God. There's none like him. You can search far and wide. And you'll find out that there's nobody like the Lord. Because even our best of friends, they will disappoint us. But I know I got somebody in here who know the God that you serve. He'll stick with you when everybody has left you. Do I have a witness in here? 
He'll hold your hand when you feel like you're falling. Do I have a witness in here? But look, 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 look at this, look at this, look at this. This heart of, prayer, of, of Paul's prayer was to make sure that we don't lose heart, but that we stand strong knowing that God is our helper. What are you saying out of your mouth? And what are you practicing with your life? If you say God is real, then you ought to walk like God is real. If you're saying that God is a healer, then you need to stop worrying about the sickness and start saying, I'm already healed. But wait a minute, brother pastor. What about the times when I did say that I was healed or that somebody else was healed and then they died? Well, let me tell you a secret. We didn't come here to stay. And wherever God wants to get glory, he's going to get glory. And listen, instead of you spending your last days stressed out, instead of you spending your last days worrying about what the doctor said, learn how to look to the hills from which come your help, knowing that your help come from God. Learn how to say, God, I want to thank you for whatever happens to my life. Because Paul had already declared to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of God. And I know we don't want to hear about that because we want to stay on this side of heaven. But I'm so glad that one of these old days, every last one of us, we're going to check out of here. And if God decide that the day is your day, instead of stressing about it learn how to give him thanks for all he's already look 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 he wanted them to be powerful he wanted them to understand that you got something on the inside of you that is more powerful than what's working on the outside of you so he says learn to respect prayer learn to respect the power of it don't toy with prayer but believe what you say the bible says that the power of life and death is in your tongue you can speak over your life and according to god's will so it will be done can i get a witness in here so here's the question for the morning this morning why is it imperative to respect the power of prayer first because it gives us inner strength somebody say inner strength inner strength is like the ignition under the hood of our cars in order for a car to be effectively used the ignition has to be ignited Paul speaks in chapters 1 and 2 of what we have in Christ while he speaks in chapters 3 through 6 of what we can do in Christ but none of these features are any good if the engine of our life is not ignited and the engine is our prayer life so Paul calls upon us to move from what we know into who we are through the power of Jesus Christ. Verse 16 says, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And this is critical because the pressures, the problems, the distresses, the troubles, and the trials of this life will drain and destroy our inner strength they will steal our peace they will siphon off our joy they will render us useless and helpless and dismantle our witness for the Lord because living in this life can be a painful experience can I get somebody who can tell the truth I know you believe want everybody to believe that your life is perfect but can you agree with me that this life can have some serious pain in it because in this life we accumulate hurt on top of hurt we are forced to experience trouble and disaster discouragement and despair disappointment 
and drama and if we're not careful it will weaken our witness on the inside our doubts will become dominant our dreams will become dormant and our fears will become factual and our faith will become fragile in second corinthians 4 and 16 the proper pattern is proclaimed when paul said we don't lose heart for although our outward man is dying yet our inner man is being renewed day by day but it's the power of prayer that preserves our inner man even if your outer person is becoming unglued the power of prayer will hold your inner person hold you together do i have a witness in here which simply means our strength on the inside gives us power to handle the outside in galatians 5 and 16 it says walk in the spirit so you won't be broken by the flesh ephesians 5 and 18 it says be filled with the spirit why did it say it because it's what's inside of you that will become of you if you ain't got nothing on the inside you can't produce nothing but if you learn how to pray and how to let the spirit of god lead and guide you you have power to move every mountain do i have a witness in here romans 8 8 and 9 teaches us that every true believer possess inside of them the holy spirit i know there are holiness churches that will tell you unless you speak in other tongues you ain't got the spirit but the devil is a liar i know people who speak in tongues and lie in english it's not about your speaking in tongues it's about the god that's down on the inside do i have a witness in here you need the power of the holy ghost to help you when you're going through heartaches when you're going through trials when you're going through sadness and sickness Paul says I pray for you I pray for you that you strengthen your inner your inner man and that's my prayer for somebody in here today my prayer is that you get strengthened on the inside so when Satan try to lift up his head you can say in the name of Jesus the blood be against you and watch that thing go away do I have a witness in here Paul is saying you need that power so that you can walk right you need that power so you can walk on water when the water wants to drown you you need power so you can speak to your drama and tell your drama get out of my life you need power here it is so you can encourage yourself you've been asking people to get you encouraged but God sent me to tell you you ought to sit down and use the power that's on the inside and begin to speak to yourself self be 
encourage self I'm trusting God everything that's not in line with the Lord I rebuke it do I have anybody in here ever spoke to yourself and said self I'm not gonna let it take me down self I'm not gonna let it cause my life to be deterred do I have any witness in here who recognize your inner man is what Paul really wants you to strengthen there's my second point and my final point here it is and then I'm going to my seat Ooh. why is it imperative that we respect the power of prayer. Not only because it gives us inner strength, but also because we experience internal fullness. Come on, tell somebody fullness. Verse 19 says that you might be filled up with the fullness of God. In other words, Paul prayed that we would be like Jesus because Jesus Christ was and is the fullness of deity, grace, and truth. John 1.16 says, of his fullness we have received all of his grace upon grace. We don't teach that too much in church because we're good with telling people you messed up so you're going to hell but today John stands to declare in 1 John 1 and 16 of Jesus' fullness we the believers have received grace upon grace. Brother Pastor what does that mean? That means we got to stop saying he's a God of a second chance. <laughs> well, Brother Pastor, what do you mean? Because he's not a God of a second chance, but he's a God of another chance. He's a God of another chance. He's a God of another chance he's a god of another chance and i don't know who's in this room today but you gotta tell the truth if justice would have served you right you would be sleeping in a grave right now but because he had grace upon grace on your life he gave you another chance and I don't care what nobody else got to say as long as Jesus give me grace I still have a right to the tree of life but Paul is saying in our text I want you to be like Jesus the branches of your life should be hanging the fruits of the spirit you will exude the love of God you'll walk in the peace of God regardless of what's happening around you you can look to what's happening inside of you and let all the craziness be what it is you'll experience joy you know the difference between joy and happiness because happiness is only temporary but joy is evermore do I have a witness in here you'll move in the wisdom of God and you'll live by the power of God and the more of God you get the more of God you want there are so many people who show up in church and they only want a little bit of God but I'm so glad to tell somebody it's nothing wrong with wanting more of Jesus a little bit was last year but now I want to lot because I've tasted and seen that the Lord he is good do I 
have a witness in here and as you are filled with the fullness of God God will move powerfully through your life if you look at verse 20 it says now all glory be to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinity more than we can ask or even think in other words brother Sherman when I read that I said in other words God wants to bless us beyond beyond you ought to tell your neighbor he wants to bless you beyond beyond can I tell you what that means you asking for peanuts but God's got mansions you ask it for stuff that is so little but God he got some great stuff for your life and it's his good pleasure to bless your life but you gotta learn how to turn on your prayer life you gotta learn to have a talk with the Lord he'll strengthen your inside and after he strengthened your inside he'll fill you with his presence can I tell you why he wants to fill you so his glory can be revealed you are going through what you're going through so God's glory can be revealed Anybody say, I'm a witness that I'm an instrument for the Lord, and the Lord, He is using me, He's using you. Your trial is only a moment, but the glory that's coming behind is gonna lift you to the next level. Do I have a witness in here? So as I Go to my seat, ignite your prayer life, turn it on, let that sleeping, that sleeping giant wake up and let God arise in your life. Listen to me and then I'm done. Listen to this. God gives us opportunity through Jesus to talk to him and the only way that we talk to him is through prayer respect the fact that what you pray for God can and he will according to his will do it for you the devil can read your mind if out of your mouth you say God fix it but in your spirit you doubt in his ability to fix it the devil knows you are already defeated you have to live out what you believe I believe he's a healer so I'm walking in my healing I believe he's a provider so I'm walking in my provider my provision I believe that God will make a way for me I don't see how as a matter of fact it's not my business all I know is that he's not a liar if he said it he'll do it and because I believe that I'm gonna stand on the authority of God's word here's the whole message learn to respect what prayer can and will do but power given and power used two different things if you buy some microwave popcorn I want you to try this today you buy some microwave popcorn today go to Walmart wherever you go and I want you to put follow the instructions put put the popcorn in the microwave Don't plug the microwave up because if you plug the microwave up, it's going to pop. 
But if you don't plug it up, just put it in there. Try to push the button. So if you got one of the old fashioned ones, turn the knob. And it's going to sit there. And it's going to sit there. And you're going to start saying, it says microwavable popcorn. How come my popcorn isn't popping? You're going to take that microwave back to the store and say, listen, and they told us a story about this at Simon. I just couldn't remember the whole story in the front end, but you're going to say to the salesperson, this microwave doesn't work. I got my microwavable popcorn. I put it in. I pushed the buttons, but nothing happened. What is up? You, you sold me a lemon. And they're going to ask you one question. Did you plug it up? If you don't plug it up, its purpose will never come to fruition. If you want your life to reflect power, you got to plug in to the power source. That's the whole message today. And if you don't plug into the power source, guess what's going to happen? You're going to say, it's defective. God doesn't answer prayer. But you got to plug in. And something we did at the church that, that, that I, I got a sermon out, I just haven't been able to write it yet. We went from regular batteries to rechargeable batteries. First, I'm like, well, what's the purpose of that? But, but I found out something. On the package of the rechargeable batteries, it says, put in the recharger first wait a minute these are batteries why do i have to charge them before i use them they should come charged but the package said charge before using then the lord spoke to me see here's the sermon right there he said because you don't know what those batteries been through. So the best way to get the best use out of it, before it goes through something else, charge it. And I wanna say to somebody in here today, if you want to keep your life stabilized, instead of you waiting until something come and hit you, learn how to put yourself on the charger on the front end so that when stuff happen you can keep on moving you can keep on walking people gonna wonder how are you making it because i charged myself up before the trouble came and because i charged myself up i can do all things through christ who strengthens me